Welcome to my channel, it's Dr. Emmanuel here. I want us to talk about a topic which is called hematospemia. And as you can see from my screen, uh, hematospemia simply means blood in semen. I know a couple of you might not be aware that there's something, you know, called, you know, as, as blood in semen, uh, whereas a couple of people might have experienced it uh, in the past or currently experiencing it. So I just want to shed some light as to what blood in semen or hematospemia simply means. So hematospemia means blood in semen, um, and it's something that could be really frightening for for you know anyone that is experiencing this. Um, so the question would be, what is the cause, or what are the possible causes of blood in semen? Uh, as you can see from patient dot information from where I'm reading. If blood in semen uh, happens in any man or anyone who is less than 40 years of age, uh, it's very likely there is nothing to be worried about. It doesn't mean it's nothing serious, but it's unlikely to be anything serious if it's happening in someone who is young. Um, and then there are two forms of this blood in semen. We have what we call the primary hematospemia. And we've got the secondary hematospemia. So primary, if you watched my previous video um, where I talked about Reynolds disease or Reynolds syndrome, I explained that in medicine, when we use the term primary, we, we typically um, mean we can't find any identifiable cause. Or we, we, we also call it idiopathic, which means we've investigated or we've examined you as a patient and we can't really pinpoint any particular cause for that symptom. So that's what we call primary hematospemia. Uh, in most cases of primary hematospemia, um, obviously we haven't found anything response, anything responsible. Uh, most times it might be a one-off or a few episodes of hematospemia blood in semen and then it settles. Uh, when we can find a cause for that blood in semen, then we call it secondary hematospemia, uh, and then depending on that course, uh, we will then need to uh, decipher what needs to be done to treat that condition. In terms of causes, uh, as we've said earlier, in primary, in primary hematospemia, you know, um, no, there's no identifiable cause. And then you can see this list of secondary causes of blood in semen. And you can see here we have it can happen immediately after a prostate biopsy. So if someone has had a prostate biopsy or if one has had a vasectomy, there's a likelihood that they could have you know, blood in semen. And obviously blood in semen happens when one ejaculates semen and then they notice that it's blood. Sometimes some patients might tell you that you know, during the ejaculation itself, they wouldn't see any blood in the semen. But then when, when they go to urinate afterwards, then they, can, they might notice some blood. Um, so, uh, hematospemia can also happen if there's any injury to your groin, if there's any trauma um, caused by prolonged sexual intercourse or masturbation. If there's a prostate infection, which can be secondary to a urinary tract infection or an SCI, then uh, that can cause blood in your semen as well. Uh, I know most people will be worried about malignancy or cancer, the big C. So prostate cancer, uh, penal cancer of the penis, cancer of the testicles are possible causes of blood in semen. However, they are not common causes. So most of the causes will be non-cancerous. So we'll be thinking about things, possible things like UTIs, STIs, any history of trauma. Have you had any history of trauma and things like that? And we can see some more uncommon causes like tuberculosis as well. Um, severe hypertension, conditions that can cause abnormal bleeding like hemophilia um, and then some tropical infections like schistosomiasis which typically causes blood in urine, hematuria. And then still on the big question, is blood in semen a sign of cancer? Most times it's not a sign of cancer but it could be especially in people who are above 40 so if anyone, any man is experiencing blood in semen and he's above 40, we usually as GPs, we usually take that symptom serious. So we'll typically be examining you, we'll examine your abdomen, check your vital signs, you know, your blood pressure, pulse, 
will have a feel of your tummy, have a feel of your groin, testicles to find. Just look out for any abnormal, lo any lumps or bumps that might make us think of something sinister or potentially sinister. We'll also want to dip your urine to make sure you haven't got a urinary tract infection. We might need to do some STI screens. Um, and then obviously if that symptom is persisting, we need to be referring you to a specialist for further assessment. So if you look at this highlighted part here, say testicular, testicular and bladder cancers can rarely also cause blood in semen. But only when the cancer is very advanced, it will, all, it will be very unlikely to be unaware of the cancer at that stage. So it's highly unlikely that uh, even, even if a cancer is the cause of blood in semen, it's likely going to be an advanced cancer because by that time the cancer cells would have eaten into surrounding tissues. But, so most cases of blood in semen, uh, reassuringly, are not caused by cancer. How do we diagnose hematospemia blood in semen? Most times it's from the history you give to, you give us as as a doctor. You tell us if you tell us you if you observe uh, blood in your semen. So that is the most important part or the first part of the diagnosis. So the history you give us, and then as I've said earlier, we need to do some of these blood tests. Check your urine to make sure you haven't got a urine infection. We might need to do a PSA to screen, which is a screening test for prostate cancer. Uh, we need to do some STI screens, we might need to do an ultrasound of your scrotum, you know, your testicles um, and your urinary tract. And obviously if it keeps happening, if it's persisting, then we as GPs will need to refer you to a urologist who will then conduct some further investigations. You might need to do an MRI scan or a CT scan of your tummy, your prostate, um, you know. Um, maybe your ultrasound of your testicles, which has, which would have been done already. So how do we treat hematospemia? Most cases of hematospemia would be primary, which means there is no identifiable cause. There's nothing sinister ongoing. It just keeps happening. I remember I've had a patient with this primary hematospemia. He's been referred more on multiple occasions to the urology and nothing sinister, nothing both sinister, non-sinister, nothing has been found. You know, but it, of course, it's a symptom that bothers him a lot. He's he, he's just he's afraid that maybe there's something that's not yet been diagnosed that is going on, and I completely understand that. If I wear his shoes, I would definitely be very anxious about it. So, primary hematospemia usually resolves without any treatment. For secondary hematospemia, we, when we found or identified a cause, then we obviously want to treat that. In terms of medications, sometimes if it's in younger men, if, we, if we've investigated, nothing has been found, but you carry on having this, then we will need to treat you empirically as a suspected infection. So we might need to treat you as suspected maybe epididymitis or suspected prostatitis, or when we're giving you doxycycline, which is a common antibiotic. If it's an older man, about 40 years, we might be thinking maybe it's a prostate enlargement and we might need to give you a medication to try to relax your prostate. So the 5-alpha reductase inhibitors, which we commonly use for PPH, you know, benign prostate enlargement. So we might need to try that medication just in case a large, your prostate might be large and that might be causing, um, or even it, it could also be a, a prostatitis and just to relax your prostate. Sometimes that may help. And then there's a question here, should I worry about my sperm, about any blood in sperm, in my sperm? Obviously, anyone in this kind of situation experiencing blood in semen uh, would be worried. However, you see, many men don't routinely look at the semen. So, and that's, that's something that is very valid. The question is, how many people will actually be able to identify blood in semen? Because if you're having penetrative sex or penetrative intercourse, chances are that you wouldn't know if there's blood in your semen or not. However, if you're engaging in masturbation, obviously then you, you, you will be able to see um, your semen and then you can, you can flag it up. Or you might engage in penetrative sex or intercourse and then after intercourse, you might go to the bathroom to have a wee and then you notice blood in your urine. And in that case, we might now be, we might now be asking ourselves, is this blood in urine? Or is this blood in semen? When should you see your doctor if you experience blood in your semen? 
says, if you are young and otherwise healthy, there is no immediate reason to see your doctor. Or I understand anyone who experiences this, even if it's someone in their 20s who would freak out. Okay, so if you experience it, the advice I'll give is speak with you. Let your GP know about it. Let your doctor know about it. Obviously, if you're young, otherwise well, then we wouldn't be thinking it's something sinister. However, we still need to properly assess you just in case um, something else uh, could be going on. If you are anxious, if you are above 40 years, if you have multiple episodes of this blood in semen, if you have other symptoms, weight loss, loss, you know, lumps and bumps, um, and, and some other symptoms, we might need to maybe uh, difficulty urinating and things like that, back pain, then we might need to, we might start asking ourselves, is there something else that we should be looking at here? Then in that kind of situation, we say it's sensible to see your doctor, speak with your GP, when you come to us, we'll take a history from you, we'll examine you, uh, we'll do some basic investigations first, and if necessary, we might need to do um, some further investigations and, and possibly be referring you to the urologist. So we've come to the end of this important topic. Um, a sensitive topic is something that um, not a lot of people would feel free, you know, discussing with anyone, even their family members. But uh, as doctors, we usually encourage you if you, if you notice these kind of symptoms, uh, don't hesitate in letting us know. And then we can, you know, give you the right advice and, and treatment if necessary. So if you think this has been helpful, uh, kindly like this video and subscribe to my channel if you are a first timer here. Thanks for your audience. Bye.